Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have back here with us Mark Smith. Mark is CEO of Niocorp Developments, which can be traded as NB on the TSX Venture and as NIOBF on the OTCQX. Thanks, Mark, for being back here with us today. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. So it's, uh, it's uh, uh, glad to be here and can't wait to update you and, and your audience. Mark, Niocorp was named the top performing mining company on the TSX Venture Exchange. And you recently announced that the Niocorp has been conditionally approved uh, for graduation to the the big board Toronto Stock Exchange. Could you talk to us about some of the goals that you've met uh, in 2014 and since you've come on to the CEO, what you've delivered uh, to the shareholder base? We'd, we'd love to, Jim, and it's, uh, there's an awful lot of pride uh, in this discussion, so bear with me. But you know, what we've put together is a group of people that are extremely passionate about this project. They all believe in it. Uh, they're putting the better part of their their uh, 24 hours a day into this project right now, and, and if you take a look at what NioCorp has achieved in the last year, uh, it's it's what most junior mining companies will achieve in a five to eight year period. Uh, we have we have no reason not to move this project along fast and furiously right now. We have a, a world class resource when it comes to niobium. Uh, as we just announced today, uh, we also have a world-class resource as it relates to scandium, and we've got a really nice little byproduct of titanium that's going to come off of this facility as well. So we've got something that's real. Uh, it's located in the United States in an outstanding jurisdiction, uh, and we just can't seem to get the work done fast enough on this project right now, with the ultimate goal being to be in production uh, sometime in 2017. So we remain focused on that goal, and, and the team is just doing an outstanding job. It's obviously a, a privilege and an honor to be named as the top mining company on the Venture Exchange. Uh, we were caught by surprise. We don't really focus on things like that. What we focus on is getting the technical work done that increases the value of the company on behalf of the shareholders. And that's why we're doing this technical work as fast and furiously and as, and as hard as we are right now. And I think that, you know, getting uh, honors like being the top mining company in the venture exchange is a, is a great way uh, to, to allow uh, the team at Nile Corp to take a step back just for a second and say, nice job, guys. You, you did an awful lot of work in a very short period of time. Uh, it's done very competently. It's done in an honest way. And those are some of the, the critical values for us as we move forward. So we're, we're thrilled to death with that. Um, we did announce as well uh, that we have received conditional approval to graduate from the Venture Exchange up to the big board TSX. We're excited about that as well and consider that to be quite an honor. The single condition that the TSX had put on their approval was that they wanted us to raise $1 million more uh, for working capital. And that, uh, although we met all the minimum requirements for conditional or for listing, uh, they did place that $1 million requirement on us as, as a precaution to make sure that Niocorp had enough money uh, in its treasury to ensure that it had an 18 month uh, uh, life on, on its budgets and, and the ability to do the work that we have scheduled. Um, I think it was a very smart move by the TSX. Uh, we immediately uh, raised the million dollars. As a matter of fact, we, the demand for the, the million dollars was um, so good that we doubled the offer uh, the very next day. So we'll actually be bringing in over $2 million uh, to meet this condition, uh, conditional approval by the TSX. And uh, when we close that deal, which should be the latter part of this week, early part of next week, uh, we should then uh, be able to file all the final paperwork. And I think we should be trading on the TSX big board, hopefully within about 10 to 14 trading days. So we're very excited about that. Uh, feel privileged to be on that big board. It opens up many, many new avenues of fundraising for the company, uh, particularly uh, focused on institutional investors. And, and those are the folks that have had a difficult time 
as you know, investing in some of the venture exchange companies in the last year to year and a half. So we've removed that obstacle. Uh, we we meet the requirements of TSX, and we look forward to, to going out and uh, talking to some of the larger institutional investors and getting them excited about this project just like we are. Mark, it's good to see this increase in investment interest. They're looking for management teams and technical teams that can del deliver. And in 2014, we saw some exceptional drilling results uh, at, at Nile Corp's Elk Creek deposit, uh, which culminated in an updated resource with an 187% increase in the indicated resource and a 226% increase uh, in the, in the uh, niobium. Uh, and and you've also found the scandium uh, the, that the scandium there's a, a significant amount of scandium there. Can you talk to us about the world class resource at Elk Creek right now? Yeah, we're we're just elated, obviously. And um, I saw a lot of this early on when I started to do my due diligence as as an investor before I was even an officer of the company. I saw the potential for this deposit, and I knew with a little bit of of very focused infill drilling that we would we'd really be able to demonstrate to the world just what kind of deposit we had out at uh, Elk Creek, Nebraska. So we got a very good uh, group of engineering firms together, SRK Consulting out of Denver and DeRouge Geological uh, Services out of Canada. We got a very strong team together with our own NioCorp employees and put together a, a very tightly scoped drilling program that ended up being a three-phase drilling program. Um, and the three phases were, uh, although it's very meaningful to us, it's probably not that meaningful to the, to the rest of the world. We put it into three phases because we had a lot of geotechnical and hydrogeological information we needed to gather as part of our feasibility study as well. But when we got done with our three-phase drilling program and over 15,000 meters of additional drilling, uh, we really demonstrated to the world just what kind of a world-class deposit we have here. Uh, we're still the, the third richest deposit in the world, but the second largest deposit known in the world now, uh, niobium. And as far as I know, uh, we are uh, the largest and, and uh, highest ore-grade scandium deposit that I'm aware of that that will be going into commercial production. Uh, scandium is a very interesting element, as you know, Jeb. It's one that has been catching the attention of a lot of people lately. And the problem that people have had with scandium isn't how good it is as an as a additive into the aluminum industry and, and other uh, areas. But it's, it's, the problem has been is that there isn't enough of it available. So having a deposit like this located in Elk Creek, Nebraska, uh, that can produce anywhere from 25 to 50% of what the entire world produces today, I think is going to be a real benefit to the aluminum industry in particular, who really can't find enough scandium to meet their needs right now. And we look forward to being a very large participant in the scandium market going forward uh, and to increase the uses of this material as a result of having a very uh, you know, firm supply, uh, one that, that people can rely upon. So Mark, as we continue in 2015, we know that there's a world-class niobium resource and the scandium content is, is world-class. The, the next steps to show that this project is economic, could you tell us how the company is working on that right now? Yeah, we're, we are in the final phases of putting a preliminary economic assessment together. And, you know, I think probably one of our first times that you and I talked, Jeb, um, I had indicated that we were just going to move straight to a feasibility study and uh, we weren't going to uh, mess around with things like PEAs and pre-feasibility studies and whatnot. But what we've discovered as part of the, the fundraising effort and with the the new uh, I think much tighter rules and policies that a lot of the institutional investors in particular have right now. Um, we've decided to go ahead and put a preliminary economic analysis or a PEA together, and we hope to have that uh, available uh, for press release purposes by about the middle of March. Um, that will serve a couple of different purposes, but primarily it will give institutional investors a, a 
a firm document that they can put their arms around and they can take to their investment committees along with this TSX listing and say, we've got something very good here. We need to be part of this. And we just really think it's going to help the interest level for institutional investors. It will also then allow me uh, as a representative of the company to start talking about the economics of this project more. Uh, Because as you also know, without a PEA or a feasibility study or something out there, it's, uh, you know, it's really, it's not appropriate and I believe illegal for me to be talking about the economics of a project like this. So the PEA is really going to open up the doors in terms of what we can say about the economics and what we can do in terms of fundraising and getting the interest level of institutional investors uh, really uh, optimized. Mark Smith, CEO of Niocorp Developments, which can be traded as NB on the TSX Venture and as NIOBF on the OTCQX. Thanks so much for being back here with us and for giving us an update on some recent developments. Yeah, it was our pleasure to be here and we look forward to speaking again real soon.